mean, uh, I'm at loss here, you know, uh, sometimes frustrated as well. How can we convince the Muslims and non-Muslims alike that following the Sunnah is not extremism? In fact, Allah mentions in the many places in the Quran and Surah Baqarah, that's where I have seen that the only way for success lies in the path of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet himself stresses in a hadith to be in moderation. Well, I'm referring to because I had personal experience with my own family after I started wanted to keep a beard and follow the, you know, sunnah because I, I loved it, you know. Uh, and then heard some negative comments from, not th that they were angry at me, but they were very friendly. And they were, in, in their mind, they thought that I was extremist, you know. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, what do you think about the moderate Muslims? And so I told them that there's no such thing as moderation or their extremism or a fundamentalism in Islam. No, uh, moderation is relative, yeah. okay? and it depends on one's knowledge and understanding. Okay? Because I don't wear the same clothes as you do, mm -hmm. and I have a beard, I might be considered more moderate than you. Okay? This is where the relativity comes in. Okay? Someone who, like me, doesn't have a beard, might be considered even more moderate than myself. Okay? We don't know anything about their actions. Okay? And you don't know anything about my actions. Okay? So it's only part of it. So it's how people see us and how they judge us. Okay? But the first thing is that we should be following the example of the prophet, who's the best book on it, which is what we say to the seminar, and we should. Okay? And that would be moderate in itself, okay? because he wasn't an extremist. Okay? He spent time with the children. In fact, he used to say to one man, he said to one man, do you kiss your children? And he said, no, we never kiss our children. He said, no, 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 we'll not have mercy on you. So, we, we, we show by our actions of the model. We show by the way we talk. Okay? And you've heard the way I've spoken today. In some places I've tended to shout a little, in some places I've, I've been a little quieter. Okay? So you may say I'm not moderate in my speech. Okay? But I'm trying to get a point across. And I'm trying to break it up so that listening to me for two hours, you're not going to get bored and fall asleep. And none of you fell asleep. Okay? So maybe it works. All right? So there are reasons for being slightly different. Okay? Reasons for being a little immoderate. But you cannot be an extremist. Okay? And that's the thing you have to watch. Okay? Now, the simple fact that you wear the clothes that you do in the Western country, people will look at you and say, that belongs in Pakistan, it belongs in the subcontinent of India, it belongs in a black climate. Why do you wear it here? Why don't you wear trousers and jacket or, or something like that. Okay? And you will have your own argument for that. Okay? And I would appreciate that. But not everyone will. Okay? And you should appreciate that too. Okay? We are different. Okay? We hold our beliefs and we apply them maybe slightly differently. I wear a western dress. I don't wear a tie. Okay? <laughs> see what I'm saying? This is how you see how moderate you are. But the very fact that you stand out with the clothes that you wear shows that you are representing a different culture to the culture here. That's the way people will see you. They're not being rude to you, I'm just saying that quite, quite bluntly, because that's the way it is. Okay? And they will say, why is it necessary for you to wear that? And you will say, because I'm following Sunnah. Okay? But people won't appreciate that. And those that know a bit more, they will say, but the Prophet, peace and peace be upon him, didn't wear a hat like that, he wore a turban. Why didn't you wear a turban? Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask another follow-up? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, they also asked the question, the non-Muslims then, and what about those Muslims who are not following this Sunnah that you are following, what about them then? So, can we take the risk and say, it's up to, and up to the best, uh, each individual and his capacity, how much he can follow yes. it, you know? In fact, I, I wouldn't say it's his capacity, I'd say how much he wants to, okay, that's and good. his knowledge. Okay? Because we're talking about faith. Okay? And in Islam, Imam, faith is degree of certainty. Okay? Or certitude, if you like. So a person who is certain of his faith knows why he's doing something and will do that. Okay? A person who doesn't know won't even try. Okay? And not everyone practices Islam to the same extent. Not everyone's faith is as strong as everyone else's. Okay? So you have to take that into consideration as well. I mean, if you look at the Christians, 70% of the 
population of the country said they're Christian. Only half a million go to church on a Sunday. <laughs> Where are the Christians? <laughs> okay, and it's similar to Muslims. Not every Muslim prays five times a day. We should, but we don't. Right? But every Muslim would admit that he should pray five times a day. If he doesn't, he's got a problem. <laughs> All right? Yes? Assalamu alaikum alaikum. Uh, my question is regarding misconceptions of Islam by Muslims. Uh, there's a case in Malaysia, uh, maybe I've heard it, uh, the Catholic Church in, in Malaysia uh, actually went to court uh, to get, uh, to use the kalimah, the term Allah uh, for their God, for, the, for God. Uh, but Muslims uh, we went to, to court. To court? To do what? To, to to be able to use the, the term Allah in the in the Bible for for, for referring to God, uh, not God. Okay. Uh, but the Muslims, good to me. <laughs> <laughs> but the Muslims uh, would not could not comprehend such a thing because they thought the term Allah refers to the Muslim God. Uh, so uh, I doubt how, that how, right how, at the beginning. I said there's yeah. only one God. It's a concept of God that varies. Now, if the Catholic Church wants to talk about Allah as having a son and whatever, then it is not Allah that they're referring to. It's a God. It's their God. Okay? Their, their concept of God. There is only one God. But everywhere God is one. And nowhere in the Bible does God say, does Jesus say, worship me. No need. Okay. So, so how, how, how do we uh, respond to the, 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 the Muslims? Uh, that is the concept of God that we talk about. Which is why I gave you the concept of God. Do you know Arubiyat, Aluhiyat, and the Rasul Sifat? But as I said, that doesn't apply to a non-believer. A person who doesn't believe in God won't understand those terms. And that's why I talked about a different alternative, because man, nowadays many people think that the um, universe came into existence on its own. Okay? Right? But we talk about the concept of God. Okay? Where do they get their concept of God? Okay? And you ask them. And you, you ask them to trace it back, show you the references. To where they get the concept of okay? Because I'm referring to the one that you said earlier. Uh, the the during the prophet's time, they also call uh, use the term uh, Allah for for God. Yes, in Arabic, Allah just means the deity. Al Ilwah, A L, my friend, I L A H. Allah. The name Allah, take out the hyphen, concatenate the Al and the La, Allah. Okay? The I is the definite article, Al Illa, the, the God. Okay? Put the two names together, that's Allah. But the, the other aspect is that if you talk a little more deeply with Jews and Christians, they will tell you that praying to God, praying to the Father, praying to the Son, is not personal. They don't get a personal, anything personal out of that. Some of them are using the names of God from the Old Testament. And in that way, they're making it a personal relationship with God. Okay? And Allah is our personal relationship with God. Okay? Any other questions? I thank you for your attendance and for you managing to get through such a marathon session staying awake. I hope I didn't bore you and I hope I didn't give you offence. It was not my intention to give offence, but then I don't want to be apologetic either. Okay. So thanks very much for coming. Appreciate it. And I hope you attend the next session, whenever it is. And that whatever you go away with, you learn something and it's a benefit to you. Have a good day.